side. The mic is yours. Please. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Sidearm. That is my online name. And I am sitting at the top of the slides up in front of you on the left. So follow me as we talk. Before I start the lecture, I want to warn you that the chances right now, the chance that you will have a successful team learning experience in this course is 50-50. What do I mean by success? Can you get the job done? And can you keep your team together? Hopefully, after this talk, your chances will go better than 50-50. And if you have questions about why it's only 50-50, we'll have questions at the end. You need to turn up your volume. Gigi, I mean, Ginger, could you help Nerd turn up their volume? I am speaking. Is anybody else having a problem hearing me? Marat, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Okay. Nerd may need to turn up their media volume on voice. Okay, Butterfly, thank you. So welcome to this presentation on teamwork and collaboration online. I'm sitting on the first slide. In today's presentation, we will give models for teamwork and collaboration for those like yourselves who are forming or participating in or leading teams. Participants like yourselves will be able to diagnose where the team is working or where the team needs work. Definitions. A team is two or more people working on a common objective. For example, look at the person sitting right next to you and imagine I have just assigned the two of you to work together to learn something new today before the end of this presentation. You are a team of two. Team complexity is the number of possible person-to-person -person interactions within a team. For your two-person team, there is only one possible person-to-person -person interaction. Your team complexity is one. But the more interactions that are possible, the more complicated is the team. Look at the person on the other side of you. And imagine I just added them to your team. For your three-person team, there are now three ways to interact. Your team complexity is three. Teams can be one-time or recurring. For example, when this presentation is over, your three-person team project is over as well. That was a one-time team. On the other hand, even when this presentation is over, Teacher Murat, Gigi, Ginger, will be sponsoring other more class presentations for you. They are on a recurring team. Teams that you sign up for are voluntary. Teams that you are assigned to are involuntary. Your UN goals for a sustainable world is an involuntary team. 
you have been assigned to it. The models we will present today apply to all of these types of teams. Team operations model. From an analytical point of view, a team may be considered as a big black box with arrows. The arrow on the left is the input of the team. It's the team members, your skills, and your time. The arrow on the right represents the output of the team, your project presentation, your project displays. The arrow on the top represents the controls on the team, which is your project assignment and the constraints on you for this course in order to pass it. In this course, your controls include the team briefing, such as this, and the project briefing. The arrow on the bottom represents the supports of the team, the things that will help you get your job done. In this course, your supports are the shared classes that you're taking and the extended faculty the many, many other speakers that Teacher Murat has arranged for you for this course. My job here today with this presentation is to empower you to be your own support arrow, for you to be able to make sure your team has a better than 50-50 chance of getting the job done and keeping your team together. But no matter what team you are on or what role you play on that team, now and in your future, this will help you. Effective teams have effective members. Each of you bring an individual investment to the team black box based on what you already know how to do and whether you are willing to do it. Together, these make up your net contribution to the team as an individual. Commitment is your level of dedication to the objective. It is what you do. Competence is your level of proficiency in the role that you play to achieve the team objective. It is what you know. This is a simple model. It goes like this. High competent team member with high commitment equals a high effective team member. Low competent, low commitment, low effective. If either is medium, your net effectiveness is medium. If either is zero, the effectiveness is zero. What do I mean by zero commitment? The most obvious measure is whether you show up. In this class today, as far as I can tell, Teacher Magua, there are people not here that are supposed to be here. This doesn't mean that they're bad people. It means that their commitment today, their contribution to this class, was zero because they didn't show up. That's the number one measure of commitment. The second measure of commitment is do they follow through? When your team agrees on a project and agrees on who's going to do what, do they do what they said they would do? If they do what they said they would do, that shows commitment. If they don't do what they said that we, they would do, that's zero. So that's what zero commitment means. What do I mean by competence? Competence is, do they get results? Do they know how to get results in what they said they were doing? If they can't get results, their competence is zero. This doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means maybe that was the wrong job to give them. Give them a different job that they know how to do. Commitment and competence. Most of the times, individuals achieve medium effectiveness 
because of the constraints on their knowledge and time. That's why we're all here. We're learning. And we're all busy people. Anything above zero is a win. The question is, for each team you are on this time, what do you know how to do, and are you willing to do it? Effective teams share roles. Your team brings a group investment to project success based on how well your members cover as many as nine different team role skills. These include leading the team, idea generating, investigating other efforts by other people, other teams, detailed specialist knowledge, steady working away, steadfast implementing, Filling in the gaps, seeing what's not getting done, and stepping up and doing it. Tracking progress toward the goal. And fine detailing. And finally, coordinating the team. That's a lot of roles. But let me keep it simple. If you want your chances to be better than 50-50 in this course, make sure that you keep to a schedule, have a plan, and everyone has a job. That's what the leaders are going to need to take care of. One of the leaders needs to make sure you stick to schedule. When are we meeting? Make sure we meet. When's the next class? Make sure we go to class. Remind people when the next class is. Remind people what they said they would do. If they didn't do it, just acknowledge, hey, they didn't do it. Somebody else has to do it. So that's having a plan. And also, make sure everyone has a job. Don't leave anyone out. That's what those nine roles are talking about. This is a simple model, and it goes like this. High coverage of the team roles is high success. Medium coverage is medium. Low coverage is low. Most of the time, Groups will be medium successful because, frankly, one or more of the team role skills are not being covered by a team member going in. Anything above zero is a win. The question is, for each team you are on this time, what roles don't you know how to do yet, and are you willing to learn them? If you don't think you're a coordinator, would you be willing to learn to be a coordinator? If you don't think you're a specialist, would you be willing to learn how to be a specialist? If you don't think you're a team leader, would you learn like to learn how to be a team leader? You have that opportunity every time you are in a team. Effective teams use best practices. Best practices address how you and your group communicate. Brainstorming is an opening exercise where new ideas are generated. Deciding is a narrowing exercise where choices are made and action begins. Briefing is a narrowing exercise where agendas and ground rules are decided before an event begins. Debriefing is an opening exercise where members reflect on what happened at an event after it is over. This is a simple model and it goes like this. Either you are talking to make things more open, to expand your options, or you are talking to make things more closed, narrowing your options. The ability to expand options and the ability to narrow options are both needed. Throughout this project, your team will cycle back and forth 
between opening and closing communication modes. Both are essential to productive team operations. The question is, is the current conversation, the one you're in right now, is it opening or closing? And is it time to switch? Effective teams develop in stages. Stages address how you and your team evolve through time. Forming is where you learn each other's names and how to get in touch with each other. Storming is where you argue with each other about how to do stuff. How do we do this? Norming is where you get used to each other and agree on a plan and detailed action steps. Performing is where you crank out the results. Throughout a project, your team will cycle back and forth between these stages. For example, adapting to changes in the skills that are available to you right now, the circumstances, the team members. You will be adapting and improvising and overcoming obstacles up to and even during your team presentation. The question is, for changes that arise, is it okay to keep the current plan or is it time to do something different? Effective teams evolve. Right now, you're in a team project called the Virtual World Team Project. Even when this is over, you will certainly be in some other team project. In fact, you already are in other team projects, even now, with your family. Your family is a team. Your friends are a team. The other activities in which you engage are teams. Work is a team. Each time you participate in a team project, you have the opportunity to experience a growth cycle. You are listening is to what is being asked of you this time. Choosing how to participate this time. Acting on your choices. Advancing based on your results and extending your personal abilities to make things happen. The question is, what are you willing to learn how to do next, this time? 